Welcome back, everyone, to our Coin6 Town Hall race in justice in Portland. We have a few minutes left here in the hour. I'm Jeff Gianola. And I'm Ken Boddy. Today we are talking with local leaders in the black community on the heels of the death of George Floyd and days of protests across the country and here at home. The question everyone is talking about right now is how do we move forward? What needs to happen to affect meaningful change? Lakiana was getting into some of that mm -hmm. uh, before we took our break, but I'd like to open it up to everyone. How do we move on from here? Thank you, Ken. We already know what we need to do, what needs to be done. I, I feel that. And if we just dust some stuff off, we don't have to reinvent this. President Obama created and brought 21st century community policing. There are manuals, there are guidelines. What I think we need is courage, as we shared before, the courage to out the bad ones. It's for me now, it's like, take a knee. Is it a cabinet knee or is it, is it the officer knee? There's no gray here. What are you standing for? It takes courage to out the bad police. And as you shared earlier, we know who they are and they know who they are. You gotta break that code. And I was glad to see when I looked at some data, how many reports that police reported the bad ones, but what was done and we need courage again. I remember Sam Adams said, I'm gonna fight this arbitration. I know he's gonna win, but have the courage to fight it, to come out. The silence will not protect you now. It's out and we get to move forward. So let's use the tools that we have. And it's about relationships too with officers. I know wonderful officers that I've worked with, Lakiana, the same, all of us have. How do we support them in being courageous and doing what they need to do? Because it's a new era. You can't remain silent and have the relationships with the community. Don't come out when you need us. Develop authentic relationships. I, I agree with that. I also um, am grateful as we have this conversation uh, to remind people that we do have some great officers and we have great relationships with them as, as uh, Antoinette has mentioned. However, what we really, there are some things I feel are important, some national standards. Um, mm. Part of that's, that's what, what's, what's not good in terms of policing in Portland should be the same as in Minneapolis. What's not right should not, there shouldn't be a difference here to there. Next, I think it's really important that we work on the funnel from the beginning. We've got processes that continue to allow what we keep getting. And there's been not enough study about what's wrong with this process. This picture has not changed. The other is we need the courage to literally say some people need to go. You all know I was public safety director in Saginaw, Michigan several years ago. Some people just had to go because they will not get with the program. And it's important that there is a sustainable way to include community, to include training. And by the way, I'd love to have a chief that's going to be around for a while. In the four years that we've been doing uh, breaking, I'm sorry, I was going to say breaking bread, breaking barrier, but I mean, interfaith peace and action. We had uh, Chief O'Day, Chief Marshman, Chief uh, Outlaw, now Chief Resch. What that means is leader, when leadership changes all the time, it's very difficult for what that person's trying to do to wait in the organization. Finally, I would say the union has got to work with us. Yep. I'll say it again. The <laughs> union yep. Um, yeah. What would you say, uh, a CJ or Lakiana, whoever wants to get a, a, another word in here, to most of our viewers who are white, who are watching this tonight, that's saying, I'm concerned, I want to make a difference, but they sort of feel powerless or helpless. What directly can they do to make a difference and progress when it comes to change? Well, before I go there, I want to, I want to speak to what, um, what I feel like black people need to do. I, I feel like there's a real message within me today to share with my brothers and sisters that now is the time. Now is the time that we unite and that now is the time that we connect. And like, um, like my auntie, <laughs> Antoinette Edwards just said, right? The reality is that if we connect, <laughs> we connect, our power will be stronger, right? And there's only one way, there's only one way 
for this country to change. There's only one path. Lakiana mentioned it earlier. It's, it's with and through Black people. It's the only way. We are salvation of this country, and we always have been, to truly realize the American dream. We're the ones that will consistently remind this country that the American dream has not been realized until it is realized. So Black people, connect, connect, call, talk, figure out what power you have. Know that you have power. Know that your power is undervalued because you're supposed to undervalue you, your, your power in this country. You live in the legacy of undervalued, of being undervalued. That's how you take a person from being a person and turn them, them into a, a battery, a syndrome, <clears throat> right? So our undoing that means we have to connect. Anything that gets in the way of us connect, any barrier, anything, social, financial, structural, we have to remove anything, right? Whatever it is, whether it's in our hearts, in our minds, wherever it, is, it needs to be removed. Right now, we're not going to get to where we need to be otherwise. So... Uh, to, to the larger point, I've been connecting with the folks on this call for the last five years in my role, and I'm grateful for that, right? Um, to, the, to our white audience and to our white brothers and sisters and to everyone else, um, the ways that you can connect is as Black people are connecting and uniting and, gain, and gathering their power together, you can do what they ask you to do. The thing that they're going to ask you to do is going to involve you sharing or giving up some of your power. Know that if you don't do one of those two things, then people will begin to consider you an adversary to their work. And you rightfully will be. You will be a rightful adversary to Black people's work if you're not ready, willing, and able to identify your power and share it, right? So tangibly, that means that people will tell you, will come to you and say, I've been looking for a job. Tangibly, that means people will come to you and tell you, I've had this great idea. And when you share it, you'll make sure that everyone knows that it's their idea, right? Tangibly, you'll be looking around in amongst Black people for, for the great value that they have, and you'll be trying to get out of the way to ensure, you'll be trying to allow them to connect to your power, get out of the way to ensure that they can do the thing that they need to do, and then lift them up and support them as they're doing it. And there's not enough of that happening in this country, and there never has. If yeah, that's I, an important. I mean, that's an important question. Go ahead. Who wanted to uh, pick up on that? I wanted to pick up on that, Ken. Thank you very much, and thank you, Jeff, as well, and all those others that have participated. Um, I, I think it's important to realize that for 400 years, Black folks have been um, complaining um, about their condition. We've been marching. We've been doing a lot of different things until white folks get involved and are compelled to get become enraged and in, engrossed into what our feelings are and how we're dealing with this, nothing will change. They're the change makers. They're the ones that have the power and they're the ones that have to be engaged. So we have to create allies. And until we create those allies and, and compel them to get involved, not embarrass them and not you know, make, shame them, but compel them to get involved because this is the greater good for all of society and it makes us all better. One of the things that we're seeing now is that uh, white, especially young white people, are getting involved. Yes. We're seeing that during the protests in Portland uh, every night ever since uh, George Floyd died. Uh, we've been seeing people out on the streets, uh, peaceful protests, uh, you know, late at night, early in the morning. Uh, we're seeing that those protests are getting hijacked by others who have other goals. But uh, for the most part, especially during the day into the early evening, we've seen thousands of white people and young white people especially out supporting this yeah. cause. But where do we go from the protest? That protesting is really making a statement, but how then do we move to the solution and the changes? Who wants to tackle that? Mm -hmm. like I think all that we said and more invite people into the conversation that we're having now. And there are a list of things that you can do, but I think folks are invested and I really appreciate the African philosophy Ubuntu to remember that we're all interconnected. I am because you are. You are my sister and my brother. And if we lead with that and with your right intention, and we can make some mistakes along the way, but if we honor who we are to each other, we can do this because at this point, I hold hope and outrage, but I am hopeful that we can do this because we need each other. When I look at the Amish holding the sign, when I see the Asian community, that Asians for black people, 
there is hope, hope abounds here. And how do we harness it? So I hear what you're saying, ask people if you don't know. And it's okay, we're here to support you because we need each other right now to make the America that we all want to live in. Yeah, I'd add to, I think that's great. And I'd add to the fact, one of the things I wanna ask everybody, and I put this on Facebook today, if you're on the street, you registered to vote. If you are not registered to vote, we need you to get registered to vote. We have one of the most consequential elections coming up both locally and nationally. And people need to use their voice at the ballot box or at the mail-in ballot. Make sure that happens. We are all witnessing America's voluntary system did not work. And at this stage of the game, it's very important that reform comes we stand with those that came before us. We need to leave a great legacy for those who come after us. I'm grateful for our um, allies of all cultural backgrounds. Everybody needs to vote. This system can and will change. And I'm a person of hope as well. Lakiani, we haven't yeah. heard from Lakiana. Yeah, and, and that was part of the side. point that uh, Lakiana was making. Uh, when we had to cut you off because of the commercial break, but <laughs> you were talking about uh, people getting involved politically and uh, changing changing the structures through the vote. So uh, we'll we'll let you uh, make a few more comments on that. Well, I I'll say two things to the white folks who are listening. They have to de develop an anti-racist policy and realize that there is not three sides like a middle. The people who are protesting, the people who are just staying at home, you're either actively working to change the situation or you are yeah. part of the problem. And you have, it is not enough to just say, I'm going to be silent. Your silence is also a weapon. And so just the same way that we are asking officers to point out those within their ranks that are, are causing division or causing harm, you have to call out those that are behind closed doors who smile in our faces or who say publicly whatever they do, but then behind closed doors, or, or you know, or have those feelings, um, you have to call them out and you have to develop an anti-racist um, ideology around that. Um, one other thing that I think is really important is that we have to look beyond just the policing issue. And I want to ask white people, are you ready to dismantle the system of white supremacy? Um, and white supremacy does not just mean KKK robes. It means the privilege that you get, that you are born with for being white. And speaking to that power that CJ was saying, you have to be able to give um, some of that up and realize that this is larger than that. There's an economic issue to it. I want to see our mayor and our governor develop an economic plan to support black people. Think about it like this. COVID-19 triggered a, a $1,200 check to every American. What, how much is slavery and Jim Crow wor it worth to black people? I believe that the government needs to pay black people in reparations for the damage done and the wealth opportunities that were not extended to them. And when you see that wealth gap between white Americans and, and black Americans, it is because the government supported white wealth building at, at the cost of black people. And we built this country through slavery with unearned wages. And so I think we have to seriously consider um, how do we support wealth building opportunities for black people? You know, we only have a quick minute left. And um, I guess, uh, Pastor Hennessy, I'll go back to you for sort of a final word to wrap up this hour here, which we could go on for the rest of the evening. But what would be your final message to viewers who are watching a special town hall tonight? I'm grateful that you're here. I believe that it's important for us to see that this is unfinished business that needs to be taken care of and we cannot wait on somebody else to do it. It is our job to get this done. Do not be upset about people walking in the street. Change has been made many times just because of walking in the street. Beg those who would revert to violence to understand, do not tear up our city. This is our city. Go home and tear up your own. Don't do that to ours. And I'm grateful, again, that COIN and that my colleagues here, uh, Antoinette, Keith, uh, Lakiana, CJ, and Senator, uh, uh, Senator Liu, I think it's great we've had this opportunity and that you all at COIN care this much to have us together. Thank you so much. We're going to get this done in Portland, if nowhere else. Yeah. We want to and thank if we stand together, we <laughs> will not fall. We will not fail. We can do this. Stay Thanks. woke. Thanks to everyone on our panel. We really appreciate your time, and I hope 
This really begins the conversation that we're going to continue, continue probably for the next months, probably for the next years. Thanks for joining us for the special town hall, Race in Portland and Justice. And before we go, we'd like to thank Vince Elmore and Suzanne Orton from Word is Bond for helping us to organize this panel. We appreciate the help and we'll continue to have these hard conversations. We invite you to join us. Okay.